Amen, amen. Brighton was a, a, a huge, huge helper for me this week. And it's, it's awesome that the, the message is entitled, Get Help, right? Because without that 11-year-old helping me with these slides and all this kind of stuff, man, I mean, technology is something else. So uh, I was bugging pastor, how you do this? How you do this? And Bright said, I know how to do this, Dad. I got you. I got you. We good, man. Just come on over here. Sit down. He, he told me to sit down next to him. Let me show you a thing or two. I said, come on now, man. So he has been a wonderful help. But that's what I wanted to stop and talk about. Um, y'all know me. I'm a, I'm a real transparent kind of guy. And throughout my walk, throughout this ministry walk, throughout life, I have been somebody that takes God's help at the last minute. Um, it's when I really, really need it. I, I sometimes shun him off because I think I can do it in my own humanness, right? I think I can work through life all by myself without needing him. And as you saw John and these two scriptures coming together, that's exactly where the Galatians were. Galatians had, the, the Galatian church had been dealing with Christ crucified. That's what it was all about. They were dealing with that, and Paul was teaching them that. So when they began to start looking and starting to change their ways on how things were going on, they were like, man, two different things were coming in on me. Y'all telling me that Christ is all I need, and these, uh, what they call Judaizers, pastor talked about them last week, the Jews that converted over to Christianity, what they start bringing is, is that you got to do works. You got to cut some foreskin off to be in right relationship with God. And so there was, there was a dichotomy and they didn't know what they needed to do. So there was a lot of dissension. There was a lot of things. And Paul, in modern day vernacular, I'm just going to tell y'all, he was pissed off. He was upset because he was like, man, I've been teaching y'all Christ crucified. That's all you need to be in right standing with God is to believe that he died for all of our sins. That's all. But you had these people running in saying, hey, no, no, that's not all. We need you to do something else. We need you to do some works. We need you to put some human effort into this salvation thing to be in right standing. So there was this banging, banging, banging of heads. So I was like, man, we have to really figure out what's going on in the text and the tension that's in the text. Now, I need somebody to help me out. Who, who, who would help me out real quick on the stage? Anybody, any, anybody want to get on the internet? Little baby says she'll help me out, see? Right next to you, she says she'll help me out. Let me, Steve, come help me out, man. Come help me out. Come help me out. Amen, amen. All right. All right, amen. Come on, come on. I need you to pick up this little... Thing. We got just a little illustration um, for you. Can, you. can you pick that up? I mean, be real careful. Be, be real careful with it, don't <laughs> All right, you, you good? Now, come on now. Just get it on off, yeah. All right, it, it, be careful now. Be careful. All right, come on this way. Come on this way. All right, pause. All right, all right. Y'all see you. Stop, stop, stop. You good? You good? You, good. you, you see that balancing act? You see, you see where the focus is on life? In, in our life like this, our plate is full. God has given us an assignment. It might be marriage. It might be, it might be a caregiver. It might be, it might be uh, the children, the house that I gave you. But we're so focused on that. We, 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 we look, at, look, look at how focused he is. He just focused in on that. And when we're so focused, we can't see God. We can't see God. Because we got everything piled up on our plate. Everything is there. So... We're taking the children to practice on Tuesdays and Thursdays and Fridays, and we're going to swim team. We're going all over the place. We're going soccer practice. Yeah. We're going everywhere we got to go. Yeah. And we take our attention off God. Yeah. 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 We continue to take our attention off God. Come on over here with me. And so, <laughs> wait. So, God's invitation yeah. for us is he wants to help us. He supplied the job. He supplied the children. He supplied the house. And this is God's invitation to say, you need help. Come on, Steve. So sometimes God just got to go and just, God just got to go and just, you all right? That's all right. Go on and put it down. You all right. Just leave it like it is. 
Just leave it like it is. You all right. Sometimes God got to wake us up and say, I'm inviting you. I'm inviting you to get my help. And so he got to get our attention. What's the first thing we do, y'all? First thing we do. Oh, the devil did it. Oh, it was the devil. That sneaky joker. He got me again. No, it was your loving God that did that. So he could get some attention. So he could say, hey, let me get some perspective. Because you need my help. That's what you need. Put that first slide up for me up up there. This this is what the big idea of this text is. Don't wait to get help. Is that what it say? Wait. Until you need help. Don't wait until you need help to get help. Realize you need help for a very long time, forever, right? 24-7. He needs to walk it out with us. Somebody say, I need some help. Tell the other neighbor, I need some help, please. We need some help. How often do we wait for the last minute to get the help, y'all? Isn't that what what the whole story of the Israelites and all them? They would have the box on their side. They would win the war. They would put the box down. They would get into the cycle of sin. And we would start this over and over. Because we wasn't bringing God into our everyday life, into our everyday moments. So put the first. What what I would like to do is I want to give you four things, and we'll be done. Four things that are signs that we need help. Four things. Put the first thing up. We got the first thing. Pride. Wrong wrong confidence. The wrong confidence. Not that, that, not what Pastor had taught about a long, a long time ago. I still remember it. It was awesome. Yeah. Personal responsibility for de- it, it delivering excellence. Not that kind of yeah. pride. Yeah. Yeah. The wrong kind that doesn't include him in your daily walk. Yeah. Yeah. The kind that you don't take him into the grocery store with you. Yeah. Yeah. you. You don't take him to the job with you. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, you don't take him to your next door neighbor with you. Yeah. God wants a personal relationship with us. And that's what he's not getting. What we end up doing is we end up coming here for our 75-minute service, and we come in here, and we, we worship, and we pray, and we do everything it is that we need to do. Everything. But then we set the box on the side, and then the next six days of the week, we ain't thinking about God until we go pick him up again and we start this 75-minute service again. Yeah. Lord, Lord, Lord. And, that, and God is saying, you're keeping me on the outside. Yeah. You're doing your thing. Yeah. And so you only call me when you need me. Ah. And so the, the Proverbs 3 up there, in all your ways, we have to acknowledge him. Yeah. Yeah. In everything, we have to put God first. Now, I looked up these two words in the Greek dictionary, Pastor. Yeah. And, and you know what? In Greek, all me. All. Yeah, 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 yeah. All. That's what it means. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I taught y'all some Greek today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or the meaning of some Greek, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything means all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All your things, when you include them, and that's what I begin to think as we've been doing this. I'm like, man, maybe that's how you walk in the Spirit. Uh, maybe that's how you do it. It's not necessarily you kneeling and praying all day. It's when you're on the road and you're driving into work and you say, Lord, can you come with me and navigate all this so I don't throw up the finger to nobody on the road when they cut me off? Maybe it's going into your job and you're dealing with a whole bunch. And if you're like me, I have about, you know, I got some people that cause me trouble and heartache. And if I don't get right with God before I get there or bring him with me, it's difficult. It's difficult. That pride, that wrong kind of arrogance. The next one, the next one, we're talking about individualism, right? Our individuality. It's about me. It's about me. And I use 1 Timothy 6 and 9, and it talks about those who want to get rich. Now, I'm not just talking about those that want to get rich or the rich young ruler or all that. It can happen to everyday people that don't consider them rich. Because what we do is we go after worldly values. We follow the world. And somebody got to know that 
if you're a friend of the world, you're an enemy to God. So that's that dichotomy, it's that battle still over and over again. So we, gotta, we, we try to build our brand. Everybody wants to build a big baller brand and all these different brands. Everybody goes to New York or L.A. and I'm going to build up my brand because I'm, and they don't have God anywhere in it. God ain't nowhere in it to help somebody. It's all focused on me. And I don't have no problem with rich people. I don't have no problem with building your brand, but you got to bring God into it in your everyday life. He's the one that knew you before you was even in the womb. He knows your plans. He knows what you're going to do. He knows all that stuff. So why don't you bring him along with you and allow him to impart into you what he wants your plans to be. Don't let what you do define who you are. Don't let what you do define who you are. Pastor, you said that last week. Don't do that. We're not designed to run this race all by ourselves, y'all. That's right. That's right. If all I'm doing is looking out for me and mine, yeah. if that's all I do, yeah. and I know other little families around here, and I don't take any heed to what's going on in their lives, yeah. and I just let my family prosper, if you will, yeah. Lord, 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 Lord. we're the body of Christ. That's right. That's right. And if we don't begin to look out for each other, we're going to stay splintered. Yeah. The Acts community, they what? Had all things in common. All things in common. And people were coming to Christ by the droves. You know why? Because they wouldn't let your your house floor close on you because they would pull you up. They would do some things for each other. They would make sure my kid or your kid or somebody else's kid has some food on their table. They would go the extra mile. They would do the extra thing and they would come together as a family. And that's where we are not today because we're working on individual things and what's mine is mine and what's yours is yours and we got to stop we got to stop the next one is misinformation wrong beliefs in this Galatian passage they was talking about the, another gospel, another Jesus. That's what people always do. You don't just need Jesus. You need these works to go along with Jesus to make you right. That's what you need to happen. And so they bring another gospel into the formation of things, and people get confused. It's done today. We get confused. Who is this Jesus? Was he a prophet? What was he? And so we continue to bring other things in. And God said, you can't be in right standing with me if you don't believe that I exist. That's where it starts. You have to believe that God exists. And you will be in right standing with God. But see, when you had these Jews, and, and I can't really fault them. You had the Jews that have been dealing with this Old Testament. And that's how they thought it worked that I can earn my way into heaven. And so they thought that it would be more prosperity for them if they obeyed every single law, that natural disasters wouldn't hurt or other foreign countries wouldn't come in and take them over. And so that's why they believed that and they brought that to the table. And Paul had to say, man, y'all, you foolish Galatians. Y'all are crazy. You don't need this other mess. You don't need these other things. Believe that he exists. Look at your surroundings. Could a Big Bang Theory make that? You got to answer that question. Did you come up from the mud or did an intelligent designer put you on this earth? What happened? And so we got to believe that he exists. And when we believe that he exists, he'll be right to straighten our paths. He'll do the things that he's called us to do we'll get, allow him to be in our ear to direct and navigate through this life. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we was at prayer uh, meeting, or at my community group on Friday, and, and Miss Connie said something. She said, uh, she said uh, um, when we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, yeah. don't sit there and put a tent up 
and stay in the shadow of death. And woe is me. God is with you. So keep walking through the valley. Because he's, he's right there with you doing whatever it, he needs to do to get you and promote you to that next step in life. Amen. And that's where we're at. This next sign, perception, having the wrong view. Having the wrong views of life. This is where it started. Y'all remember, Jesus uh, was, was with these two boys, the sons of Zebedee. They wanted to be on, one wanted to be on his right, and one wanted to be on his left, right? They thought he was coming to be that political messiah, to put his foot, Jesus to put his foot on the Roman people's necks because they were the oppressors of the time. So they wanted somebody to come through and bring them up in power now. Mm. The wrong view. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if you guys have seen this movie called Vantage Point. Yeah. But in this movie called Vantage Point, I think uh, Forrest Whitaker and Dennis Quaid are in it and several people. But in the movie, what it did was it made you look yeah. through a person's own perspective, yeah, yeah. a different vantage point. And it, they would all meet. This thing was going on where they were blowing up the city, and everybody had a perspective. Yeah. And that's what their perspective, though, that's what the Jews' perspective was, yeah. is that he's coming to destroy the Roman guard, Lord, and we're going to be on top. Lord. That's what they believed. Yeah. That was their view. And the Gentiles, the Romans and the Greeks, they were like, crucifixion is the worst form of punishment in that day. There is no way in the world that a crucified criminal could be the savior of the world. Right, right. That was their viewpoint. Right. You see what I'm saying? Right. So when they have a viewpoint like that, they couldn't see that Jesus was the one that came to do away with all that mess. Yeah. He came to do away with it, but they couldn't see that. Yeah. So, attention yeah. in the text. Yeah. But here's the other thing. When we don't accept God's help, yeah. the world is looking at us. Yeah. And see, we, we talk about going to church every week and yeah. our God is a big God and over, and, and the world is looking at us. Yeah. Yeah. And because we refuse to get God's help, yeah. the world is making a judgment of who our God is. Yeah. 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 He's making a, they're making a judgment. Good. Well, if you're going through this, and the way you look, what, what do I need to go through it for? Right. I ain't coming. Right, right, right. So when we begin to look at things like that, we got to be honest with ourselves. Yeah. We have to include yeah. God in our lives yeah. at a different level. Yeah. Yeah. And we have to have that perception. Yeah. Yeah. We have to have that yeah. perception. Yeah. Now... I want to talk just a little bit about some things going on in our world. I do, I, I'm not a very political guy, but I do know what's going on in the world today. And, uh, and, and the Lord told me in my time of study, um, this is what you need to say. So I want y'all to listen. Um, we, we're having a lot of things go on with um, people being murdered while driving black. And hear me out. Hear me out. The tension that it's causing yeah. in the black, the brown, the white communities yeah. Yeah. is causing huge tension. Yeah. And what that tension calls for, what that brings up is a, it, it raises up a phys physiological response. Yeah. Yeah. It raises up fear. Yeah. It raises up anger. Yeah. It raises up grief. And all, everybody's going through it because what I can tell you is that the Lord doesn't see black, white, blue, or green. God is who God is. And what we end up doing is, is we end up begin to fight something that's in the spiritual realm. This is not against flesh and blood, but it's against principalities. But we're taking carnal weapons and trying to deal with a spiritual component and it don't work. That's what the Galatians were trying to, uh, Paul was teaching against the Galatians on. You can't take a carnal method yeah. to, be, to earn your way to Christ. Right. 
You can't do it, and that's why we can't do it here either. Now, I'm not saying that all you do is run into your room and pray. That's not what I'm saying. You pray, and then you get up and you go and do what God has told you instead of what the emotion of the human experience is telling you. That's what you go and do. See, we trust God, but we still got to go get an application. We trust God. We still got to go to that interview and do it. So you gotta, we got to get on the right page with this thing too, or you're going to have a cycle and the devil just sitting back chilling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, and I'm going to talk about the body of Christ. He got us splintered. Yeah. We got white church. We got black church. We got brown church. Yeah. We can't come together. Yeah. And as long as the devil can keep us splintered. Yeah. Yeah. But what the church does have to do, it has to call wrong, wrong and it has to call right, right. And everybody got to be in the same perspective on that. Because if we're not, we're going to stay divided. These things are going to continue to happen, and we're going to continue to be angry with a wrong response for a spiritual situation. So we got to get there. So put up this last slide for me. Put up the last slide. You got to stop being pimped. I know that's not the right vernacular. I understand that. But it's street accurate. We got to stop being pimped. You see what I'm saying? Pride. The wrong confidence. Individualism. The wrong motives. Misinformation. The wrong beliefs. P, perception. The wrong views. And we continue to get pimped. We continue to get pimped. We go, we go, we go, and we get pimped, and the devil is laughing. What, what, what does pimp mean to me? We keep working overtime, and nobody getting paid. We keep working overtime, and ain't nobody getting paid. And the devil is just sitting back saying, I got them Christians, I got them all on lock. And I'm going to keep pimping them as long as they let me. Yeah. I'm going to keep dividing them. Yeah. I'm going to keep doing things to them to make them not come together as a community because I know how strong they would be if they did. Right. Right. Lord, Lord. So I'm going to keep them separated. Yeah. We got a big vision on this campus, yeah. and we need everyone. And I, I came out last service, and I'll say it this service, because I believe I have some ownership in it. Yeah. We got an RCA academy, and I got an 11-year-old child. And I haven't moved him in there. And that's on me. And what I'm saying by that and why that's on me is because we can't build nothing together if we keep dividing things up. See, the school would have all the resources the school would need if everybody's child was there and the thing would be raised up because we got all the resources there. I understand that. You can't build on land, $2 million worth of land that was donated by everybody doing their own thing. Man, we, we got enough of us to come together to do something, but we always worried about who's in power, who's going to get this, and we, we do just like the world does. And we got to figure that out. We got to figure that out. Here's the last thing. Little illustration. Little illustration. Um, y'all ever been to DIA? I'm assuming. Everybody been to DIA? You know they got them little walking things you walk on? You know how, you know, you be getting it too, don't you? You know? And you don't get tired either, right? So I was at a DIA, me and Pam was catching a flight. And for some reason, she wanted to walk. I said, okay, honey, I'm getting on the thing. So I'm going, I'm looking. You know why? Because I'm in the spirit. This is what the spirit does, right? He talking to me. I don't have to put much load on my feet, and I'm just walking. Right, right. Pam over there, <laughs> she huffing and puffing. And no, I didn't ask to take her bag because she could have got on with me. Yeah. All right. So I'm just walking, and I'm getting on down the road. And she huffing, feet hurt. I know they hurt because she, she got some knee issues going on, and I'm just walking to the, to the ticket thing. Get on, honey. So I end up, and I'm walking, because I'm in the spirit, and she in the flesh, right? 
That's what happens when you're in the flesh. You get tired, your feet hurt, and, and you're bringing your luggage and you're sweating. And I'm not like, you could be over here on the spirit track instead of in your humanness track, right? You in your humanness walking mad, frustrated, upset, walking over here. So I'm getting it. Oh, shoot. I'm gone. I'm just moving. And I get to the end of the thing and I say, where's she at? Pam. But yet, I hear this squeaky voice. You know, my wife got a high pitched voice. Daddy! Pam is chilling out at the thing because the cart of grace took a pass. The cart of grace. It just went on and took her pass all the way over there. Just the cart of grace. Thank you all. Come on, worship team. The cart of grace. What I came by to tell you today. Christ died on that cross for me and you. And it was by his grace that we sit here today. He went in and everything you've done in your past, God has forgotten. And everything you will do, God has already died and paid the price and shed his blood. You do not have to earn your way to God. But James is right. If you know he exists and you know that he has that type of love for us, then it would motivate us to go out and do right. That's the, that's the, that's the gospel message. That's the gospel message. And we don't use up our grace reward, but it's there. And God is free to give it to us anytime he wants to give it to us. But if we get on that spiritual track, we'll navigate and we'll let him talk with us and walk with us. And that's what God wants to do with us, guys. He doesn't want you to go through life just willy-nilly. He wants to be included. He wants to be in your relationships. He wants to be in the grocery store with you. He wants to talk to you. He wants to make your life better. But we got to be able to acknowledge and not be so myopic in our views. Our plates are full. Our plates are full. So we got to take some things off our plate. Let him direct our path. And we're going to be all right. Amen. Amen.